Okay, good evening. Let's call this meeting to order the Champaign County Board Committee of the Whole for Highway Facilities and ELUC. Uh, today is Tuesday, January 11th, uh, 2011. The time is 6.09. Roll call, please. Alex. Present. Ammons. Present. Anderson. Here. Benzel. Berkson. Here. Betts. Here. Carter. Coert. Holderfield. Here. James. Here. Jay. Here. Jones. Not. Kurtz. Here. Langenheim. Here. McGinty. Here. Michaels. Mosier. Nudo. Here. O'Connor. Petri. Present. Quisenberry. Here. Richards. Present. Rosales. Here. Sapp. Schrader. Here. Weibel. Here. We have a quorum. Uh, Ms. Coat and Ms. Benzel informed me that they are uh, ill and could not make the meeting. Uh, seek approval of the minutes for the Committee of the Whole for December 7, 2010. So moved. Moved by Mr. Betts. Second. Second by Mr. Rosales. Discussion? See none on Ms. Ammons? I'm sorry. I just want to make a... A little louder? I want to make a change to the agenda. I'm sorry. Uh, that would not be until the next... We haven't approved minutes yet. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm ahead of you. Uh, any discussion on approval of the minutes? See none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Chairman, I would like to move approval of the agenda only. Second. Second by Mr. Langenheim. Discussion? Ms. Ammons? Just a uh, question I'd like to move um, to make sure that Mr. Betts is not, is not Does not include the agenda. Thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. Public participation. Mr. Bruce Stickers. Thank you. Uh, my name is Bruce Stickers. I work with the Champaign County Soil and Water Conservation District. And I wanted to speak to section nine of what you're going to talk about this evening is under the Environment and Land Use Committee and part B, which is direction to CCRPC planning regarding the proposed update of the site assessment portion of the land evaluation and site assessment or LISA system pursuant to the LRMP. Uh, just a little bit of history. Our, the Soil and Water Conservation District, when anybody uh, wants to construct a project, a subdivision or whatever in, in the county, and we also do the same thing for Champaign and Urbana and some of the municipalities around, we do a, a resource report for John Hall and send it to him, and that's the, the land evaluation portion of this, uh, this LISA system. Then the county does the site assessment, which basically is running through a series of questions to determine how, how good a project is, such as you know, how far it is from a fire department, how far it is from town, is there water available, is there sewer available, going through and answering all of those questions. That system was put into place in Champaign County, and I just looked it up this afternoon, in February of 1984 with a suggestion that about every, you know, five years or so, you kind of need to look at the questions, make sure that they're all appropriate and work good. Uh, that was 1984. This is 2011, and the system has never been reviewed. About six or seven years ago, Leon Wente from the Natural Resources Conservation Service and myself were here, and we presented a program on what Lisa did, and... Uh, how it should be reviewed. And ever since that time, it's been a priority of our board, uh, the Champaign County Soil and Water Conservation District, that really this system needed to be improved. And every year it's been put in our plan of work. And every year I would kind of tell the board, well, yeah, I'd like to do it, but I don't know how we can get the county to do something about it. So all of a sudden, this has come up now, and you're going to consider it. And so our board has for a number of years now had it in our plan of work consider it very important and would very much appreciate if the county board members would go ahead and direct the RPC to do that. Uh, part of the proposal shows that you would like me to participate on <coughs> the panel and if it is decided it's obviously your folks decision on who's going to be part of this. If you wanted us to be involved we are more than happy to be 
uh, a presentation that's going to be that's in your packet tonight says that we're supposed to be on there and our board is also supposed to supply a member at our last board meeting our board decided that yes they would be more than willing to do that and we will name a person you know as soon as we know that this is actually going to go forward so it is a very important thing it's just a matter of reviewing something that's been around since 1984 and i know most of us things that were done in that we did in 1984 even if they were real good a little review would you know would be a good thing so our board strongly supports it we are more than willing to cooperate in any way that you would ask us to in this matter so thank you very much sir further public participation see none will close that um communications i have one here uh this friday is the uh combination champaign county city of champaign city of urbana martin luther king uh countywide celebration it's uh going to be at the hilton garden inn it's 1501 south neal street champaign program starts at five oh, sorry program starts at four o'clock and it promptly ends around five we're pretty good about running a tight show and there's uh, after from five to six there is some hors d'oeuvres and refreshments uh the theme this year is move on the dream stand for community through tolerance understanding and love i want to point out that the featured keynote speaker is uh, bob butterbean love who is a uh, well-known basketball player for the uh, uh chicago bulls i think back in the 70s uh one thing i want to point out about him is that really a very interesting story was that mr love had a real bad stuttering problem and after he retired from the game he was reduced to actually washing dishes in a restaurant so somebody actually saw him there and decided that that some therapy might help him out well it did and then you can come to this celebration you can see where he is now uh, the, that, that, that event of course is free is there any other communications ms anderson I uh, would just like to comment that the uh, nursing home board met last evening uh, af after getting snowed out in December. Uh, I think uh, you will be happy to hear that for the past year we are 233K to the good um, in closing out the year. and. Our census goal uh, was 195, and I don't have it right here in front of me, but I think it was 196.5 uh, for the year. And we were concerned that December is always um, a low month. People are, are out, but even the census stayed up at 195, and I just wanted to share those figures with you. For, uh, Mr. James. I just wanted to comment that there was a meeting held with public health and the county board of health some of us were there and then some other county board members were in attendance on an issue relating to cherry orchard near thomasboro illinois so i just wanted to report that to the board and if you have any questions feel free to call uh, julie pride anything else okay thank you we'll move on to uh highway transportation mr j Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, highway and transportation. The first item uh, tonight is uh, the monthly report. I'd entertain a motion to uh, accept and place on file. So moved. Mr. Lagenheim, seconded by Mr. James. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passed. <coughs> County Engineer. All right, the first item, number one, resolution for the improvement of County Roads 11 and 32, section 10-00429-OORS. Um, this is the road that runs from Thomasboro straight east and then turns north and goes through Gifford all the way up to Route 136 and then continuing north of Route 136. Um, it eventually ends up at County Road 9. Um, for the uh, construction season of 2011, 
uh, we plan to uh, mill and overlay 15 and a half miles of this roadway going from Thomasboro actually east and then north through Gifford and then uh, two miles north of Route 136 where there is a uh, there's a line there if you've ever been up there where the uh, the roadway section uh, north of there was actually built at a later date and is in much better shape um, this is a federal aid project we have applied also to receive money through the uh, truck access route program or the TARP program to upgrade the road to uh, 80,000 pounds. Um, it would be bid in June of 2011 on the, um, it'd be on the federal bid letting through IDOT, most likely be constructed uh, in July and August. I uh, have a meeting um, tomorrow morning to speak with the uh, mayor of Gifford about doing some improvements to Gifford as well while we're working on this project. Um, I would ask that the, uh, the resolution as it's shown, actually it says $600,000. Um, that needs to be amended to say $800,000 from the county's allotment of motor fuel tax funds. Um, the total project cost is estimated at $4 million. Um, to do 15 and a half miles of road, 3.2 million would come from the feds, uh, 800,000 from county motor fuel tax funds. If we were successful in, uh, in getting the uh, TARP application grant, actually that would cover the 800,000. Uh, but we do need to appropriate money to begin with the project because I won't know until about April whether we're gonna get that TARP money or not. Um, but if we would, the project would essentially be uh, you know, wouldn't even have any county funds in it. We'd be building 15 and a half miles of roads without using our motor fuel tax funds or our county highway funds. Um, so I would uh, like to have that resolution approved. So moved. I'm sorry. Who moved that? Mr. Kurtz, thank you. Second? Second. Mr. James, any discussion? <laughs> yes. Um, can we clarify that the motion includes uh, amending the amount to $800,000? Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. Um, if this TARP money doesn't come in and it does take $800,000 out of the budget, what will that deter you from doing? Nothing. We have the 800000 in the budget. You do? Okay. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Any other questions? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion passed. <clears throat> uh, the second resolution is authorizing the county board chair to sign a joint agreement with IDOT for the improvement of Monticello Road. As you uh, probably are aware, we, uh, we did a uh, majority of Monticello Road last year. This is actually the intersection of Route 45 and Monticello Road um, where the uh, stoplight is. We did not uh, reconstruct that piece because of the uh, the loops that were in there that control the uh, that control the stoplights and IDOT was coming through this year to do Route 45, so we felt in the best interest to uh, have them do that under their contract instead of do it under ours. So if you drive Monticello Road, you'll see about 450 miles west of the intersection with Route 45, where the the pavement is severely deteriorated, and then it turns into the section that we rehabilitated. So it'd be that first 450 uh, feet of roadway. Uh, this would be done by IDOT. This is a resolution asking uh, authority for the county board chair to sign the agreement, as well as appropriating $61,000 for our share of uh, doing that legwork there at the uh, U.S. Route 45 and Monticello Road intersection. Uh, just to clarify something, Jeff, we, this is feet we're talking about, not miles. You indicated miles in your That's a long way, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I got some funny looks. <laughs> My apologies. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Ralph? Second. Second, Mrs. Holderfield. Questions? Yes, Mrs. Just one question. Um, what part is ours if the uh, IDOT is going to do the project? What part of the roadway is ours? What, Every, no, no, no. What part do we, is the 61000 Actually, the, the total project cost, and I have the agreement here, and it didn't get into your packets, but the total project cost for their project is about 3.9 million to do Route 45. This is just $61,000 to do Monticello Road while they're going through. So basically, 
everything from their right-of-way line, which is approximately 75 feet from the center line of the road, out to where we stopped our project is the piece that this $61,000 is paying for. Any other questions? Yes. Jeff, it's fair to say we saved $61,000 on the first project by not intervening in something that would have been re yeah. torn up and redone anyway, right? Right, right, yeah. Any other questions? Hearing none, all those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion passed. Other business? Um, I know there's been some conversation about uh, Lincoln Avenue and Olympian <coughs> Drive. Um, I was, uh, you know, my task back in November was to uh, try to meet with the landowners out there and try to come to some resolution and a compromise of finding a, a westerly route for Lincoln Avenue. I have been working on that, uh, working with the Squire family as well as Jason Berrickman, who's now representing the landowners. Um, I don't have anything to report because I've been in negotiations with them and um, we're trying to kind of keep it, I guess, between us until we come up with some solutions. So, um, but I can report that I have been working diligently with those folks. I feel like I have a good working relationship with the Squire family as well as uh, Mr. Barrickman and things are progressing. Tom? Is there a, a finite time in which the state funds um, that are, quote, dedicated to this, that they will hold them? Well, there aren't any state funds appropriated to Lincoln Avenue right now. They're all appropriated to Olympian Drive. Um, and 2013. And the Olympian Drive, is that, is it, I presume that, are those finite in terms of time? No, no. Um, the majority of the funds are through the Illinois Commerce Commission in order to build the bridge, which goes over uh, the railroad tracks. And those funds are slated uh, for use in 2013. Um, so I guess the, the real impetus is to actually find a terminus for the Olympian Avenue or Olympian Drive project. Where is Lincoln Avenue going to be? Um, so that... So the way you tell... If, if you don't spend it in 2013 for the... You, you lose it or...? Uh, that's up to the Illinois Commerce Commission. We can ask for an extension. Will they grant it? I, I can't tell you that. They, they might, they might not. Mr. Chair, may I have a follow-up? Yes. My follow-up is, at, at this point in time, and I don't want to misinterpret it, the Lincoln Avenue terminus doesn't have fixed funding? No. Okay. Do we have an estimate in terms of the cost? Should that be the option? Um, I'm confused. For Olympian if, if, or? If for doing the Olympia Drive and connecting it to? Um, to build Lincoln Avenue is about $4 million, if okay. that's what you're asking. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. And then the money isn't sitting there somewhere. No, not currently. So where would, if, if that was the option, <coughs> where would that money likely come from? Federal, uh, federal aid urban allotments and or some kind of federal money that uh, Urbana would be asking for out in Washington, D.C. And there's some prospect of that? Yes, there is, actually. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Mr. Rallis, did you have your... I'm sorry, I'll go ahead. Yeah, you guys have something? Well, a uh, couple of things. Uh, as I have been listening to this process, I, I was under the impression that the money that uh, is under the uh, um, uh, Lincoln, I mean, Urbana is running, has got money that they could allocate to Lincoln. That they could request a change if the state representatives and the state senator agreed with that. Now, is that correct? That could happen, yeah. yes. I mean, that, that's been pretty much bantered about that all parties were in agreement with that. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess there, I think there is money for that. But that being said, that's not my, my motive for asking to speak. Um, at the subcommittee, we asked <coughs> as a part of what, what Jeff is doing right now is correct. But as uh, I know I made the motion not seconded and it passed, we also motioned that um, the engineers draw a rough draft west of Shirley Squire's home 
and in a in an area that would provide a working uh, use of the bridge so it wasn't going to be too hard to, to do that and uh, to get the bridge built and that to me that was a February 1st deadline to come up with something so I'm wondering if that has been started uh, I know we most of us got a letter from uh, the families who are affected by the sweeping s and they are willing to compromise I, I was at the meeting and they I put it to them right there I said if we can get this done are you guys going to support what we're doing to get to Olympian and uh, Berkman said that they are amenable to that subject to the negotiations with the Squire family and um, it would relieve 11 families 12 families of uh, having the sweeping s right on their doorsteps plus you know potential industrial uh, businesses warehouse businesses the uh, on their on their uh, street so that that's what I think is the the uh, pressing issue right now um, we're trying to take this in steps um, and I've been working with Jason to uh, make sure that he and I are walking with the same foot pattern and we had a, uh, a four hour long negotiation session he and I and and uh, two-thirds of the Squire family last week and uh, we have agreed um, with our within our negotiation session that um, we need to make sure everybody is open and willing to uh, make some kind of concessions before we start trying to determine how far away from Ms. Squire's house the roadway might go. Um, so we're diligently working on step one in order to get to step two, but I don't want to overstep my bounds and push somebody the wrong way who may be open to discussions. Okay. So February 1st may not happen, but I can tell you that we're working diligently w to get uh, an open discussion going about the possibilities. That's fair. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes. One more, one more, um, <laughs> just more of a comment than a question. Uh, I think, although I'm certainly sympathetic to the concerns of the landowners in that area, people who would be potentially infected by the extension of Lincoln Avenue, uh, I think we also have to take into account that there are not too many uh, parcels in Champaign-Urbana uh, suitable for rail-served development. And I would hope that we are, uh, in the spirit of compromise, also attempting to maintain parcels on the west side of any Lincoln Avenue extension that would oh, yeah. be big enough for uh, rail-served development. Yeah, there's, you have to be uh, about a half a mile from the railroad in order to come down off of the bridge and be back down to level roadway. Okay. So thank you. I don't know what parcel size is appropriate, but that it seems far enough in my thought process. Any other questions? I have one, Jeff. Uh, the county is obligated if, if we do Lincoln to have a financial support. What would our part of that be? Um, it would be one half of the local share whatever that local share might be. And that would be in the range of what to what? Two million to zero. Well, that's a pretty good range. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to get... <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, the chair's report is the roads are slick. Be careful going home. Uh, everything goes on congenital, I believe. That concludes the highway department part. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. J. And next you. up is County Facilities with Mr. Sorry, Betts. That. That's true. <laughs> um, we don't have a lot of business this evening, but we do have some. Um, Mr. Reinhardt's here, uh, the physical plant monthly reports, if he has any comments um, to make before um, the committee asks questions. Anything noteworthy? Uh, I would just like to remind the committee that this is still not the total final of uh, 2010's report. Uh, we have at least one half, half of a month left of utilities and we're waiting for the just paperwork to finish through the auditor's office so we can give you next month the absolute final. 
Questions from committee members? I'd entertain a motion to receive and place on file. Moved by Mr. Jay. Seconded by Mr. Kurtz. Discussion? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed the same. Motion carries. Update on the Art uh, Bartell Road project. As you can see, if you drive up, up Art Bartell Road, the uh, structure is complete. The superstructure is complete, and they are uh, installing siding, and uh, they were scheduled to start installing the roofing today. But, of course, the snow has delayed them. The steel structure was delivered exactly on schedule. The footings were on schedule. They are a little bit behind on the concrete flat work because of the cold snap that hit us real quick. They have told me they anticipate trying to make that back up, and as it stands now, critical path-wise, the building is on schedule as it was proposed uh, at the start of the project. Mr. Nudo. Alan, will they have to use blankets and uh, heat? Yes, they have been using blankets on all the footing work that they did install, and uh, they will be uh, using blankets inside, and they will partition off the what is going to be the offices areas, and they will heat that so they can pour the flat work and start constructing the uh, office areas. Other questions? Next item is a history of Champaign County energy audits and projects. This is for your perusal and, and um, for you to keep as part of your record so you know where we've been. Uh, maybe it should be just received and placed in file. Is that a second, Patsy? Second. And you're entitled to it, Patsy. Um, it's nice having the history, but there's no explanation why in January 2004 and April in 2006 the proposals were rejected. I believe the simple answer is, <clears throat> excuse me, I believe the simple, simple answer is it was too, too expensive. It was very cost prohibitive for us to purchase the utilities, the poles, the lines, the transformers, and everything from uh, Illinois Power so that we could put in primary metering for the East Campus, along with the fact that we do not have the, um, the support staff to maintain our own uh, power lines. That is a, uh, a step way above what our facility plant uh, employees are trained to do. Thank you. Other questions? There's a motion to receive and place on file. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed the same, motion carries. The East Campus stormwater issue. Mr. Reinhardt. I would like to report that um, I did have a meeting last week with uh, Tom Burns and Chris Billings from Burns Clancy Associates, and we believe that we have identified our um, uh, least uh, our mind, the minor amount of work we think we need to do to satisfy the city of Urbana's requirements. Uh, we also have tried to look at planning ahead, thinking that, well, what in five years, what if we added some more structures or added more parking lots, what would that do to our current plan? And taking it one step further, maybe even up to 10 years. Uh, we believe we have identified those, um, those items but now the next step is this week we are going to meet with the City of Urbana planners and uh, discuss and make sure that what we believe is our minimum requirements is the same as what they believe before we can decide what type of package we would like to design and put out to meet our requirements to uh, the City of Urbana for their stormwater. When you do this, are you intending to have one proposal that says this is the minimum and then an, another alternative that says a five-year proposal and another alternative that looks toward 10 years. So we, the board can evaluate financial impact and whether long-range planning for the 10-year buildings um, might be cost, more cost-effective, expensive in the short term, less expensive in the long term. I don't even know that's true, but... If that's what you like, I believe we can put that together with some estimates. And of course, the estimates will be real-time dollars today. And, and in five years or 10 years, will those dollars still be exactly what we thought they were today? We'll do the best we can, but that's, you know. But I, I guess yeah. my question is, is, is that an alternative 
approach that, that folks want to see? We may end up going with the cheapest way right now, but do people want to see figures um, that show this is present and then f what five years and ten years looks like in terms of this? If people don't want to look at that, then Patsy. Um. My first question to you is that I sent to Mr. Betts uh, information and PowerPoint presentations of the work that Jim Patchett does. Uh, have you had a chance to look at that information yet? I've, I've looked at it and I have forwarded it to Right, I'm people. asking them. I don't know whether you looked at it or not. I have not. No, I okay, okay. I would really appreciate it if you would do that because Jim Patchett has been brought into the community by the city of Urbana in which he gave a presentation and that's one of them that I sent to you. The city of Urbana is beginning to pursue alternative means of handling stormwater and the work that Jim Patchett does cuts down the cost of the management and the mitigation of stormwater management. And along with some of these alternatives that Mr. Betts just suggested might be useful for the board to have a chance to look at, um, I think it would be good to include in that some of these alternative means, especially because it would save a great deal of money for the county. And I would be happy to work with you uh, on that end and getting you information about that and even bringing Jim Patchett back into the community to talk about some of these approaches. It's time for us to start thinking ahead and especially if you're going to do five and ten year projections, it would be very worthwhile doing that and save a lot of money for the county. Mr. Richards. I would like to see us have the the multiple proposals that Mr. Betts talked about. because A few months ago when we were talking about this, I know there, there was some contention on the county board that uh, several people said they didn't think th that they had enough information to make an educated decision on what exactly we should go forward with. I think that we'll be better able to do that if we have some different options to at least structure our thinking and help us think, think the best thing that we need to do on this project. Mr. James. <laughs> Well, I couldn't agree more probably to have some sort of plan, but as we all know, plans are just that, plans like budgets. But instead of saying the cheapest way, let's call it the most affordable way and the most feasible way. Deb, did you want to say something? I have a comment. Just that I, I know I'm participating on the City of Urbana's stormwater um, site management project and so I've seen the presentations that I think that you're referring to and I think part of our thought is that um, when we meet with the city of Urbana they are going to be able to provide their ideas because they're working on that in terms of alternatives or options that we might want to look at in in the storm water management solutions that we would look at and um, additionally I'm not sure, but we don't have a budget for an another for another outside consultant at this point. We're using um, Burns Clancy because they're most familiar with this campus and bring expertise regarding engineering and stormwater management. So that is our current consultant that we're using to assist us with, you know, working with the city of Urbana in determining, from the city's perspective and our perspective, what this project should um, be looked. Look, what it should look like. And I do anticipate that we will bring back a range of solutions to you. We allowed ourselves, I think, a fairly reasonable budget in the current construction project fund for stormwater management on this east, east campus. And we will want you to provide direction about how those monies are spent in terms of what we bring back. I guess when it, what I'm raising in a way is 2015, we built an ex uh, a big addition to the county jail. That's going to have a stormwater drainage impact. Do we want to anticipate that taking place when we draw these plans? We have other potential buildings. Do we want to anticipate in terms of that uh, these the structures? That's what I'm lo I'm looking at, and I know that they're huge costs when you anticipate, but there's huge costs when you don't as well. Um, Mr. Nudo and then Mr. Mangano. I agree with Tom. I, I think that this kind of project can be phased. 
in terms of uh, additional stormwater drainage just as you as the process and progress grows my, my real question to Deb is I know we bonded today what did you put in the budget for this portion of it? I think we have about 400 to 450 thousand in the budget for the stormwater management project and that's substantially less than the 800 that was originally uh, bantered about so uh, I know mr. Burns has been working because of his expertise and working with uh, Urbana that we will have that advantage of working with with him to to make sure that that the cost stays in that range and then also to as Tom said we could phase this uh, project as things grow around here thank you mr. Langenheim just for the record just for the record I, I I'd like to endorse the idea of anticipating our needs our history with physical plant and so on is rife with situations where we've been penny wise and pound foolish Ms. Petrie I understand that you have Burns and Clancy, um, but I think another way to look at this situation is when we uh, bring in maybe another consultant, that consultant might pay for his or herself in many ways over because of how other designs, I mean, $450,000 is less than, of course, 800000 but still things can be done for less than 450000 and that's something that we really need to be sure that we investigate doing that. Mr. Richards. We changed our schedule so that we would have the opportunity to have more study sessions. And I'd like to just throw out that I think we should consider, uh, when we start moving on this a few months down the line, having a study session with all of this so that we have a chance to actually discuss something and look at these before these various proposals or ways that we could go before it's actually a motion sitting in, in front of us that we have to vote on right then. Without a motion on the floor, I, I do get a sense of the body, and you tell me if I'm wrong, that people do want to look at some alternatives. They want a little long-range planning in terms of anticipating things, and that Alan is directed to consider those um, if, when he brings back more information to the board. It, it, is that a consensus of the body? Okay. Thank you, Alan. And next is the final item is a notice to proceed Illinois Department of Commerce Economic Opportunity Installation of High Efficiency Lighting at Brookins. Um, any comments? Yes, uh, we uh, applied for this uh, grant uh, prior to receiving the grant for, through the Regional Planning Commission for the uh, block grant that we did receive. So this is in addition to the, the, the second grant for improving the lighting here at the Brookins Administration Building. Thank you. I don't think it takes any action on our part. Um, chair's report. Um, very briefly, I am really enjoying working with Alan. Um, he has taken me on a tour of various county facilities. I've been in most of them over the years. Some, it's been quite a while. Um, I would encourage, and I know Alan would, would do this, new, new members who have never gone on a tour or are not familiar with buildings, I'm sure you could set up a time and he would happily um, show you around. It's very enlightening. It shows you how well the county is doing in some areas and where some of the obvious deficiencies are. are. Um, but I think it's a, it's a good opportunity to take advantage of his expertise and knowledge and um, I would definitely encourage it. It's helped me a great deal because storm water drainage is not something that this kid who grew up in Los Angeles is terribly familiar with and he has really helped me. It took him about 45 minutes to keep driving me around and showing me what it meant, but it, it did, did mean a great deal and I think all of us that, that are interested in these issues, especially new members, would be very, very useful. Um, I have no further business and I don't think there's anything that has to go before the full board. Thank you, Mr. Betts. Next up is Mr. Kurtz uh, with uh, ELUC. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, as we go through the uh, agenda, I'm going to ask uh, when we uh, move to for discussion, have John, before we get questions, let him give us an explanation of each of these items so that 
Uh, he might be able to answer questions up front before we start peppering him with questions. Uh, so first, let's move on um, A, the direction to zoning administrator regarding proposed increases of zoning ordinance, subdivision regulations, selected other related fee, pursuant to LRMP, priority item 3.1B. I so move, we'll have a second. Ms. Anderson, uh, Mr. Rosales. Anderson first, Rosales second. John, would you please uh, give us your reasoning for this? Uh, well, Susan Monte is here also, yes. and Susan will be doing the, uh, the work on this, so she's here to answer any questions Susan. also. I can say a few oh. things. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, the item before you is a proposed 8% increase to the zoning ordinance fees, specifically the zoning use permit, compliance certificate, and zoning filing fees. <coughs> fees associated with the sub subdivision platting and engineering review. Fees associated with the floodplain development uh, review and minor adjustments to certain paper documents available upon request from the Department of Planning and Zoning. The actual proposed fee increases are shown beginning on page 21 of your packet. Um, you'll see those listed. And previous fee schedule adjustments approved by the county are shown beginning on page 25 of your packet. The proposed increase of approximately 8% is generally consistent with consumer price index increases between 2006 and the first half of 2010. So that's an overview of, of what you're looking at. Uh, it's been about nine years since the last significant fee increase to the zoning ordinance, zoning use permit, and zoning case filing fees. John, you have anything to add to that? Um, I would just add that um, there is a, a general increase of 8%, but we're also proposing a specific change on the maximum fee. And if you look on page 21, uh, the second line in the table, uh, all other buildings, uh, the current maximum fee for any single structure is $1,500, which is, I believe, ample for any one or two family dwelling, but I believe that um, the county absorbs a much greater amount of unfunded costs on commercial buildings. And I ask Susan to include a greater increase on that maximum for for your consideration and um, it's essentially doubling the maximum fee from the current 1500 uh, the eight percent increase and then doubling that up to 3240 per structure now that's the maximum um, they would only pay that amount if the area based fee you know gets up to that amount uh, Commercial buildings have uh, handicapped accessibility we have to review. There are generally more complicated issues, um, annexation agreement details that we have to coordinate with cities on and things like that. Um, right now, we're, you are absorbing a lot of the costs for commercial structures. You would still absorb a lot of the costs, but that would reduce it by a great deal. Um, and I think with the fee increases that Susan have, has proposed, I don't think these increases are unreasonable. She's already done some comparison with other counties and it's, it, it compares, uh, it's not an unusually high rate. Uh, I don't want you to think that uh, people would be paying more than uh, the cost of the review because I don't think that's true. I think in every case, um, with the exception of the simplest residents, and in fact, we don't get many simple residences anymore because we're no longer permitting on subdivision lots. And when you have subdivision lots, there really is no review. You just gotta make sure that you're within the lot lines. We no longer permit in subdivisions. It's all rural areas where we have to do extensive reviews of the, make sure we've got a good zoning lot. Um, so even for a simple dwelling, you're incurring a lot of costs. Uh, this increase would, would help reduce the amount that we're losing, but it's, we're not gonna suddenly generate huge amounts of revenue over this, um, so. Okay, thank you, John. Mr. Richards first. Yeah, I do have some questions on this. The microphone, please, Mike. 
Sorry. Uh, first, uh, you just said both that this the increases would cover cost, and I think I heard you say something about this still wouldn't cover commercial costs. Are both those true? Did you mean by covering costs that that's on the residential? Uh, you anticipate? What I meant to say is the increases that we're proposing would still not, you're still not going to recapture all of your costs. So it's a reasonable increase, but, but you're not going to be recapturing all your costs. And that's even greater for commercial structures, um, depending on the particular structure. And this is of the cost of essentially what we might call the red tape, the, of the reviews. The well, it's the cost to ensure compliance with oh, your yes. regulations. Um, and the other, in general, how much now are we bringing in in these fees, and what are you tar thinking this is going to bring it up to uh, Susan, every year? Actually, Susan Monte did an example on based on September of this year. That might be helpful to review. Okay. Right. Uh, as, as I said, it's an approximately 8% type of an increase. Uh, actual revenue from September 2010 permits, zoning use permits issued, was uh, 3499 With the proposed increase, uh, it would have been 3730 So it'd be like $231 additional for the month for zoning use permit activity. And that actually comes out to an approximate increase of 6.6%. Now, for zoning case activity, um, it's, it's more like an 8% increase. Uh, for the month of September 2010, we uh, had an in input of $1,080, and with the proposed 8% increase, it'd be $1,166. So that's, that's like a, an example. Okay. I guess my last two follow-up questions would be quickly. Um, if this isn't quite covering the cost about how much of the cost is left unfunded by this, uh, that's difficult to say uh, on a zoning case. Um, what you're really paying for is um, a legal advertisement, which is about a hundred dollars, and then um, you're probably not even covering the cost of preparing the first memorandum to the zoning board. Okay, and I'm, am I? Did I see correctly in here? It looks to me like we are not doing it. This is a one-time. We don't have a fee schedule on here. This is a one-time increase, as as written currently. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thanks for your patience, Stan. I went through this, and uh, as we all know, everybody's struggling. I mean, times are tough, and everybody's looking. The state's looking to raise taxes, raise fees. Uh, I know 8% in the scheme of things, based on your figures, isn't going to really break anybody. But to me, these are the, you said it's been a while since it's been raised. It doesn't really justify wanting to raise it more all of a sudden. Uh, I think it will probably, in this climate today, discourage some folks. I, again, it's not going to break the bank, but if I'm looking at it and I'm wanting to build something, uh, there's too many other opportunities out there because a lot of uh, counties and other entities are offering breaks and enticements and because we're short in one area we might be cutting our throat in another just to get a few more bucks i mean i always use the when i talk to friends and folks that are doing things i look at movie theaters and this is probably a bad comparison but they charge seven eight bucks to get in and there may be four people in there well if they charge two bucks they may have 50 people in there and they're still making money because they're showing the movie and heat in the place so here we got staff. Granted, we're not taking in what we would like to take in, but I would rather see us be more friendly to those that are coming in and not always worry about what we're going to collect. And as times get better, then we can look at the situation and say, okay, we're spending a lot more time and we can probably bump this up with too much of an argument on anybody's part and, and get a little better response. But I think when we always pass something, uh, we don't look at those ramifications like we did with the pet fees, and I know people for a fact that now just aren't registering their pets. And I think it's sad, so those of us that pay the dues continue to pay them. So I would say that we really need to look at this, and I'm not against an increase, but I think it should probably be, in my mind, half of that or a little less, just to cover some of your costs and then see what happens. But that's just my thought on the matter. Uh, Al. Stephanie, and then Patsy. Al? 
Yeah, I, I, I'm opposed to it right now, and in fact, I'll make a motion at some point to defer it till next year until we see what the economy gives us. But I'll tell you this: um, this is perception. This is not. Uh, it, it, we're talking peanuts in in the big picture because I just figured the numbers that uh, uh, on an annual basis, based on a September, which is probably a typical month, um, there's a little more uh, construction and things going on in the summer months, but we're looking at between sixty-five and a hundred thousand dollars in fees over the two other two areas. If I'm wrong, correct me, but my point, go ahead, Susan, please. I, I, what you just said is not consistent with what I just said. Um, essentially, uh, we're looking at 6.6% in zoning use permit activity which is, is, are you looking at value of construction? Well, I, I took your you dollars, I took your dollars and, and extrapolated to a year's figures. I mean, what you threw out the, the two numbers and then I extrapolated 8% and came up with the number. Okay? So my, here's my point. Um, this is perception and developers, what are we looking at here? We're looking at developers who will build commercial buildings that will increase our property taxes. I mean, that's, that's the number we're looking at. That's, that's the big picture, guys. This here, this what we're talking about here is peanuts. I, and what typically you do when you're looking at increasing fees is when the ducks are flying, when you got so much going on that you cannot handle the business, you increase the fees to slow down that, that part of the business. And I, I would guess from what we've heard in the past in your, in your periodic reports, John, that our permits are down substantially, substantially. So what are we telling Developers, we don't want you. We don't need you. And whether you, uh, you know, if, if you're down 40% and your guys are standing around, where are you losing money? Where, where, where is the payroll being used then if you're not using it for permit fees and things? So if we're down substantially and we want to grow business in the county to build property taxes, this is the wrong time to do it. And I'll move to defer it until next year and look at what the permits are. And that's, that's my motion right now. I'll make that motion. Second. Uh, Stephanie? Um, thank you. Uh, I just, I'd like to read something here. Champaign County will encourage economic growth and development to ensure prosperity for its residents of the region. That's prosperity goal number three in the land resource management plan. With my background, given my background, and in the building community, first thing that's going to happen is one, it's going to discourage them from building, which we don't want to do because that's going to hurt us economically. Secondly, they're going to pass these costs to whoever they're building the building for. So when in the big picture, what happens is the more costs that the developer has and the builder has, they're going to pass those costs to whoever is purchasing the property, the company that's coming in, or wh whatever is, is going on around us. So I, I, I have a real problem with an 8% increase after nine years. You know, gradual increase is more acceptable than a, just a hard and fast 8%. If you haven't increased the, the, the uh, fees in nine years, that's not the, the current consumer's problem. That's not their fault. This should have been looked at a long time ago and done things gradually. And again, I'm going to agree with, with Alan when he says when the ducks are flying, when it's busy, then you raise the rates. You don't do it when, the, when, when people are down it, you know, hard on their luck right now, and that's what's happening. We've got a community that's not increasing. They're not, they don't have new projects on the, on the books, and then we're going to go to them and say, oh, by the way, we're going to increase your fees. Absolutely not. It's inappropriate at this time. Point of order. Uh, Point of order, Mr. Kurtz. Who's? There's a motion on the floor to defer. So I think the discussion should be on that motion to okay. defer or not. Was that an actual motion? Yes, they did. I'm sorry. Okay. Second. Sorry. Mr. Okay. Do we have a second on the motion? Mr. J. Okay. Second it. I'm sorry. I missed that. Um, discussion on the motion to defer. Mr. Betts. A proper motion to defer needs to have a specific date in which it's deferred to. I said one year. Said one, year. one year. So we're looking at January of 2012. Correct. Okay. Mr. Richards. I'm going to vote against this motion to defer for uh, a couple of different reasons. One is uh, you can you can make the 
argument that with the current economic state, we shouldn't be doing this now. But you can also make the argument that because of our financial state here in this county, that people using county services should be paying as much of a proportion of that as possible on things like this. Uh, and also, looking at some of these increases of $3, increases of $10, I cannot imagine somebody canceling a building project in the county because of an extra $3 in fees. Uh, Brandon? At, at caucus, I said that I was not going to support this because of the timing of it. Um, I... We had some very good discussion at caucus, some ideas on, on how to make this work. I am concerned that in some cases we have um, significant percentage increases based on, um, on I, I'm not sure what the factor might be. It could be that what we should look at, and it was discussed at caucus, is the concept of um, providing annual uh, COLA increases to certain things that we know that we're going to need coverage on. Uh, it, it is more gradual that way, more digestible that way, perhaps. And so, Brandon, we're just this is just on I the, mo the motion to defer. I so understand that. If we if we right, if I'll we pass, defer, but I was getting. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Chris. Um, I think these comments are very relevant to the motion to defer because, as I understand, the motion to defer would effectively say that we're not going to raise these fees for a year. Am I okay. correct in that assumption, Mr. Chair? Uh, what I'm hearing here from the, from the presenters is essentially it costs money to provide the services required to issue and follow up on these permits, that at the moment these fees that we're charging do not cover the county's costs for providing and, and following up on these permits and therefore when we talk about you know passing costs on and and you know who's subsidizing who essentially either we put the costs on the guy who's building the building presumably has the business case for doing so and expects to generate revenue from that or we put it on the other 200,000 taxpayers in Champaign County who aren't building the building and I think uh, I'm concerned that if we look at, well, we you know, raise fees when times are high, we lower fees when times are low, that we're starting to look at using fees as incentives or impact fees or that type of thing. I think what we're looking at here is just a simple case of trying to cover the cost of the counties uh, uh, promulgating and, and following up on its regulations. So I, I don't personally think that this is a this is objectionable. So therefore, I would okay. not say we should put this off for a year. Okay. I think that if we've been waiting, it, it sounds like we've probably should have been raising these over the last eight years to make sure that we're covering our costs. We already waited eight years, so now we're going we're gonna to wait nine. I'm not sure that's proactive planning. Mr. Langenheim. These arguments, these arguments pertain to the substance of the question. Correct. They do not pertain to the motion to defer. And therefore, I'd like to call the question on. Let's question vote is on called. Vote motion to defer. Second. Question is called, seconded by Carol. Roll call. Roll call. Uh, a yes defers, a no does not. Okay. Alex. No. Ammons. No. Anderson. No. Benzel. That's not good. Berkson. No. Betts. No. Holderfield. Yes. James. Yes. Jay. Yes. Kurtz. No. Langenheim. McGinty. Yes. Nudo. Yes. O'Connor. Yes. Petri. No. Quisenberry. No. Richards. No. Rosales. No. Sap. Schrader. Yes. Weibel. No. Thank you. Yes. Uh, motion motion fails. Uh, Mr. Weibel. Um, I hear a lot of talk about a desire to perhaps phase the sins. Therefore, I'd like to move to amend the motion on the floor to cut the fees in half, 
we, so we will raise the fees by the half of what is proposed and then a year from now we will increase the other half. So effectively in a year from now we, is that right? Yeah, we'd bump up, it'd be a half now and half a year from now. Is that your motion? That's my motion. Second. Uh, I have a second. Mr. Richards, the discussion on this motion, half now and half in one year, correct? Uh, Astrid. Everyone keeps saying times are hard. When times are hard, I think the taxpayers should not be asked to subsidize the building industry for another year. I mean, that's what we're doing. Uh, so another hand over here. Uh, Mr. Nudo. Well, some of us who are in business understand that the fact is the property taxes that are generated by that building far outweighs what we're talking here. And that's the key to what we're talking about. I, I, I appreciate what Pius is doing, and I appreciate the fact that, uh, that we're trying to, to ameliorate what, what, what's going on here, but I'm not convinced. I want John Hall to show me that we're losing money. Yes. I, I, if we're down in permits, and there are people who are on the payroll not doing anything to that end, I want to see the numbers before somebody tells me in a meeting without numbers being shown that we're losing money on a certain project. I just, I, I've got to believe that first. And, and that's, to me, that's the, key, that's the key thing. And, you know, believe me, we, when we talk about TIF money, when we talk about um, incentives, for example, the village of Rantoul waived all fees to try and build residential homes uh, when they knew that they wanted to go after residential homes. There are ways to get developers to build in the area you're talking about. If, if permits are down dramatically, probably in excess of 50%, right? Uh, that's difficult to say, but definitely near that at least. Fair statement. Increasing the fees is not perceptionally a good thing to do. Now, you, you know, those that want to raise rates and fees and look at it from the inside, I mean the outside looking in, I see your justification. For those who are in the business of building buildings, this, I, I, the reason why I am on this is I got a call when I was on vacation from the Chamber of Commerce. They're adamantly opposed to this, adamantly. And if you think it's peanuts, they don't. So uh, we're not subsidizing anybody, believe me. When those property taxes come on board, you will have, you'll more than make up for it. If they don't come on board, you have nothing. And, and so be careful what you wish for, that's all I can say. Mr. Richards. Uh, I am gonna vote against this amendment. I don't. Most of, a lot of these are three dollars, ten dollars, two dollars increases. With increases like that, I don't see any reason to phase it in over two years. Damage. Um, I would actually um, support the phase in process, but I do want to say that uh, I, although I really appreciate the uh, passion of Mr. Nudo and I understand where his interest lies, I've sat on this board and watched this board raise fees on individuals on pets and we didn't generate this much conversation and though that's where the real rubber meets the road uh, for the individuals who really don't get an increase every time we increase business is a little different and I understand that but in this case after nine years of not raising any fees and we've raised fees in every other sector over the last two years and almost every year some fee was raised um, I couldn't even understand how we can save face in this regard and not at least adjust it to the degree that Mr. Weibel is at least pointing to, I would work with that as opposed to zero. So I won't work with the zero. Patriot. Uh, may I ask Ms. Monty a couple of clarification questions on the research that she did? Uh, the comparable counties that you looked at in relationship to the fees that helped you get to these numbers, did you also look at the number of building permits and the amount of money this generated or did not generate because people thought the fees were too high. And in addition, I have one more aspect of that. Were these counties that were uh, had such a decline in building permits as has been pointed out this evening is happening here in Champaign County? No, uh, the research I did was spot checking uh, rates of various counties for to get an idea of where those fees were as far as numbers. I didn't do a lot of historical 
checking and, and I assume their building permit rates would be similarly down as Champaign County, although I did not check that either. Uh, I'm going to have to agree with Alan. I would like to see it, what and if there's an actual deficit and if there's an actual true need to increase the fees, <laughs> increase the fees um, at this point. I still would like to uh, have an opportunity, and I think we all should, because we're, we're, we're representing our constituents regardless. They're from this community. We're representing them. And I do not believe that this is fair to go to any business and tell them they're, they're increased in, in taxes, they're looking at power uh, bill increase, utility increases, hookup fees. It, it, I have a problem asking anybody to accept a fee increase without understanding and giving a fair and reasonable understanding and explanation as to why. So without giving us the numbers of if there's going to be a deficit and then, and then it should befall to the taxpayer. But again, you have to remember, we all have to understand when that building is there, we've got a new tax base that we're going to be increasing our revenue from. Mr. Langenheim. Now these arguments are becoming repetitive. I would like to call a question. Question is called. Uh, I disagree. Second. This is a committee of a whole. <coughs> Absolutely not. Would you like to say something, Mr. If, if I would. I haven't had okay. a chance to say anything, and there may be a few other people. Uh, first of all, this is a committee of a whole. This is a committee meeting, and <clears throat> I think it, it behooves everyone, if they want to speak, they should have the chance to speak. I've been with this before, and I've raised my voice before about this, when discussion's been tried to cut off. I'm sick and tired of this. Now, thank you for giving me the floor, Mr. Chair. <clears throat> the history of fees in the history of fees in this county has long been, if you want to call it, <clears throat> um, for lack of a better word, short. We've always been short on not covering our so-called costs for for our staff and for <clears throat> availability of going out and, and hiring engineering firms to do more specific things for us. It, it's always been a deficit. I, 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 the, the point, I, I'm going to vote for um, what Mr. Weibel has suggested, his, his uh, different motion. But uh, I had a real problem with us raising fees on wind, wind farms and wind towers when we don't even have one permit yet in this county for a wind farm. I, and I have a real problem with that. I understand the logic behind what Ms. Monty was charged to do with raising fees, but I still, <laughs> without one wind farm, and, and we're looking at 2012 before we even probably see a permit. We'd be lucky to see one this year, the way I understand it. So <clears throat> I will support though a phase in. I think it makes more sense, but we're never, I mean, it, 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 it might be impossible to ever, ever pull up <clears throat> the amount of money to cover some of the fees that, that are, <clears throat> or some of the, the things that are needed for engineering, engineering studies and such that uh, will cover the cost with fees alone. Um, like I said, staff has always been shorthanded. Uh, I yield back. just thank you, John. Just on uh, that b a bit of information, uh, wind farms, uh, turbines, fees will not be raised under this resolution. It's uh, on page 22, near the bottom. It's the same as it has been, and will not be raised eight percent. Well, Point of information uh, that just concerns the big wind farms, not small, not right. small ones. The small ones will be raised. If you look at filing fees for variances, page 21, middle of the road. Page 22. Uh, okay, is there any other discussion on this? I'm, so, I'm sorry, Alex, Chris. I'm sorry, I just have a brief question for the county administrator. Uh, is it safe to say that essentially virtually all the costs that are associated with executing the county's responsibilities associated with this fees are personnel costs? Yes, absolutely. I mean, this is all salary costs, right? We're not, we're not. Right. Yeah. buying a lot of supplies or buying vehicles or whatever no, in order is to time. do this. You're paying for the time of the staff. And do we, when we've raised or 
evaluated other county fees, has the consumer price index been what we've used to do that? And do you feel the consumer price index is a is reflective of the county's the trends in the county's labor costs over the last eight years? Um, over the last eight years, the county's labor costs probably exceed the consumer price index that's being recommended here. Okay, thank you. Okay, Ms. Rosales. I would like to hear what, since we're in the discussion section, what uh, Brendan McGinty had to say. <laughs> okay. Ms. Anderson. I guess uh, since we haven't raised them in nine years, I question that the permits are down because of our fees. It would seem to me that it's probably the economy and the demand and what uh, people are holding back on uh, wanting to build houses or whatever it is because of that rather than our fees. And I would like to see us recover the costs of, of doing business. I do have a question for John though. Um, if we would do, you know, the motion is to reduce this to half of what you're suggesting and then go to the, f the full amount of what you're requesting. Is that difficult doing that, you know, making a, is that gonna create extra work having a new fee system now and then within a year we're going to have to change them again? Does this involve um, communicating that uh, fee change? I mean, is that going to add cost to this as well? It, it's certainly not as efficient as doing it at one time, but um, from my view, if uh, half an increase is better than no increase right now, and um, I'm hearing that you know a lot of the members want to have more justification, and um, you know we can provide that uh, either at the next meeting or or next year for the other half, but uh, I. Mr. Schrader was absolutely right when he said that our costs have never been covered by fees. I thought the board wanted to, us to recover as much fees as we can. If the board doesn't want us to recover fees, that's, that's fine. We can, you know, but that's the way it is. I guess I'd like to just say that uh, having served on ELEC for a number of years, this question has come up about are we you know, covering the costs, and I feel confident in why you are telling us that it doesn't cover it. And I, I think I'm concerned about those taxpayers out there who are not involved in the building or going to build, and they're going to be the ones that are, are paying for someone else that's benefiting from the lower cost fees. Uh, before I recognize anybody else, since uh, Brendan had a statement to make uh, on the other motion would you like to speak to this motion okay uh, mr james and mr langenheim in the speech well at board of health we've been looking at fees on the restaurant inspections and what have you and when we looked at it we took into account some of the smaller areas that we serve and what their output was versus our fees we realize that we have gasoline and staff time and benefits that we pay but sometimes, like Al said, the cost of doing business and having that business there generating jobs and all that other money that comes back to us in another form offsets some of the costs that the taxpayers pay. Do I advocate that? No, I'd like to see the fees be fair. But that goes back when you have a department like the Board of Health, their due diligence wasn't being done by checking that every two years and keeping up on things. And I don't like comparison to other counties. Every county has its own uh, special needs and special uh, things that it has to account for but when we're looking at this like when we look at fees and you have to go back out two or three times yes that costs time that's staff time but maybe we ought to look at some type of way to put that back to that one owner instead of across the board you can't go in and say well this is what it cost me for all my staff and maybe you only dealt with three individuals and everybody else did the right thing so there's more that comes into this than let's just raise it and Al's very right. I mean, uh, you can raise everything you want, and sometimes you're going to end up cutting off this other end here, and you end up with no property tax increases, no jobs, and what have you. I don't think any of, a, any of us really are against fees, and when some of these other issues come up about fees that have been raised, 
uh, that's where Jonathan is absolutely right. There needs to be more discussion, but sometimes we hear it, we just want to pass it, we want to move on. But it does affect a lot of people. We sit here and we're the ones that we used to sit around our TVs griping about, gee, Manelli, another tax increase, another fee increase. Call it what you will, we got to pay it. And we really need to think about that. Yes, we need to operate right, but the people in charge of them departments need to either make cuts or they need to come in on a every two-year basis and say, hey, we need to study this. This is what's going on. All right, before, before I recognize anyone else, I would appreciate it that if you have something to say that has been said already, I'd appreciate it if we just move on. Uh, Mr. Langenheim, uh, you're next, and Ms. Petrie, but let's not keep repeating, you know, rehashing the same points over and over again. Mr. Langenheim. No matter what I want to say, it's already been said. I think we ought to vote on this thing. All right, Ms. Petrie, and then Mr. Nudo. I'm trying to figure out how we can get some better sense without voting on the proposal of a, and I don't know if a straw vote is allowed in a committee of the whole, but to me there's two senses going on here. One is do we cover all of our expenses or do we look at the county and see what no, we would like no, to No, Patrick, stimulate? there's only one, one motion on the floor right now, and that's for the 4% now and 4% a year from now when there's not two items on the on the floor right now. Jolene no, no, Martin. I'm asking, is there ever a provision in a committee of the whole where a straw vote is allowed? I think you can do a straw vote in a committee of the whole. That's correct. Okay, thank you. Okay, Mr. Newton. Yeah, th the other point I wanted to make about uh, what's going on in current terms right now, if you read the Wall Street Journal, the USA Today, the state of Illinois, is at the top of the list of embarrassment where we are raising taxes. We're the only state in the union that is raising taxes to the degree we're raising it. And this, when this comes out, the, the public is gonna look at this and couple us with the same approach. I'm just telling you, when this hits the paper uh, next, whatever, next board meeting when we vote on this, whether it's half the increase or not, this is going to be what is the perception, that we are coupled with the kinds of things that are going on in the state of Illinois with no concern about the current economic environment. All right. Do we have any other further discussion on this motion? Mr. Jay. Well, kind of, Mr. Chairman. Several years ago, we raised fees across the board on everything. I don't know how in the world we missed these. But I think we, we actually gained about a million dollars in revenue. So although this might be peanuts, uh, by itself it might be but fees are fees and let's don't lose sight of that and the other thing I like to make mention of and I have to do it because I was so adamantly opposed to the adoption of this LMRP to begin with uh, because th we are at the tip of the iceberg uh, we're just starting on what it's going to cost us to implement it and we kept saying oh nobody was worried about that that's not a big deal it is a big deal and it's going to get bigger as we go on thank you very much you're welcome Okay, um, uh, yeah, uh, is, there, is there discussion completed now? All right. Um, roll call. I'm sorry, we have a roll call for a roll call? Roll call. Okay, roll call, Cat. A yes is for the 4% now and 4% a year from now, is that correct? A year from now, Pius? Okay. Uh, a no is a no. So, roll call, please. Alex. Ammons? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Berkson? Yes. Betts? Betts? I'm thinking still. <laughs> <laughs> In the name of compromise, I'll, I'll vote yes, even though I think it's mm -hmm. wrong. Holderfield? No. James? No. Jay? No. Hertz. Yes. Langenheim. Yes. McGinty. No. Nudo. No. O'Connor. Absolutely not. Petrie. No. Quisenberry. Yes. Richards. No. Rosales. No. Schrader. Yes. 
Weibel. Yes. I have 10 to 9. Is that right? 10 to 9, motion carries. Which might change at the board meeting if we have more members. So this is going to be up in the air, I think. Until next Thursday. Oh, I'm sorry. This is final action. Does not go to the board. Thank you. Uh, now let's get to B. Why? It goes, it's a text amendment. It will eventually come to the board, yes. Oh, it's a text amendment. It will eventually come to the board. Eventually. Uh, if we're still around. When? Um, well, we, we would proceed to the ZBA, have a public hearing. That would take a month or two. So um, three or four months from now, this would come back to you from the public hearing. Okay, well then would you provide the information that we're requesting on costs, actual costs, et cetera? We'd be appreciative of we that. We will provide the information for you. Uh, Mr. Richards? Is that not a vote on Mr. Weibel's amendment? Yes, and it was the actual four, four. Well, Oh, we didn't, make, we didn't vote on the main motion, which, well, wait a minute. A motion to, okay, that was a motion, you're right. That was a motion to amend the main motion. We now have to take a vote on the main motion, which is now amended, amended which is the 4% and 4%. Roll call. Roll call. Um, Mr. Chairman, I, I apologize if this is out of order, but I hope I'll be indulged since this is a committee meeting. If I could uh, make another comment to, uh, to John. John. Uh, I think the biggest thing I've heard today is to the extent that we're, as a board, asked to increase fees, the more information ZBA will be, or we as a full board will have to vote on this, the more information we can have about what your staff, what it actually costs your staff to do something, and the more that we can look at sort of why these things are done in eight-year increments rather than, you know, looked at on a slightly more frequent time schedule, I think would make all of us feel at least more confident in whether we were voting in the right way. So as that comes forward again, I guess we'd like to see some more information. Okay. Thank you, Chris. Um, Kat, we have a uh, roll call on the main motion. Yes, for 4% and 4%. And roll call. Alex. Yes. Ammons. Yes. Anderson. Yes. Berkson. Yes. Betts. Holderfield. No. James. Yes. Jay. No. Kurtz. Yes. Langenheim. Yes. McGinty. No. Nudo. No. O'Connor. No. Petrie. No. Quisenberry. Yes. Richards. Yes. Rosales. Yes. Schrader. Yes. Weibel. Yes. Have, uh, I have 13 to 6, is that correct? Uh, motion carries. Okay, let's go on to B. This is a direction to the Champaign County Regional Planning Commission planner regarding proposed update of the site assessment portion and only the site assessment portion of the land evaluation site assessment system uh, pursuant to LRMP priority items 4.5A and 4.5B. Uh, move Ms. Anderson, second Mr. James. No, no, I'm second. I'm second. I'm, okay, second Mr. Richards. Uh, we'll have discussion, but first I want my, just to, to state that as we have heard this is just an assessment, an update of site assessment portion of LISA. All right, that's all we're doing. This is 30 years since 1984 since we have updated this information, and that's all we're asking to do here. So uh, is there any discussion? Mr. James. Well, with that said, when I was reading through all this, and again, I'm going to have to be like Mr. Betts, a good country boy like me from Los Angeles. I got a little lost in it. But... Uh, I was seeing in here where they're going to do some, looks like some testing and, and saying what the soil grade is or no. Maybe I misread that. I'd like to respond. Briefly. Please do. Okay, uh, the soil 
uh, analysis and soil information is the LE por That's portion. The yeah. So this portion, the SA portion, <laughs> is um, considers non-soil factors relative to a specific parcel of land. So we're going to be looking at factors related to development pressures and other public values of the site. If you look on page 31 of your packet, um, down at item number six, uh, that gives you an idea of the kind of things we're going to be looking at. Uh, factors, right now we have redundancy in the factors in the SA portion. This is a tool that's referred to by our Zoning Board of Appeals anytime we have a rezoning or a special use permit. So uh, over the years, we have uh, realized that there is a certain level of redundancy and the factors can be fine-tuned. So essentially, we have lots of guidance to go by. The uh, state of Illinois has updated their LISA system a couple of times. We have a consultant uh, from the USDA who is uh, giving us advice and guidance. We've had suggestions, and this has been on the radar for a long time. So. Uh, it, it's not related to the soils component of the LISA score. Uh, Stephanie? Um, there is so much information in this, and, and it's very well put together, which I do appreciate. Um, but I would really, before we move on anything that is involved in this, I would really like an opportunity to have a study session well, on this. Are we going to be Well, that's this process is a study session uh, suggestion for the date of October 25. 2011 once we have the recommendation of the committee that would be formed to actually make a proposal and a recommendation or about this update so at that point when you have the input from the committee that's being proposed would be the most logical time to consider what's being proposed uh, Al uh, Susan uh, what have you budgeted uh, from your Seventy-six thousand dollars for this. I, there's nothing in here that gives you gives us a, a uh, what your budget is proposed to be. Right. This this appeared both the, the proposal appeared in the fiscal year 2010 work plan, and the actual moving forward with the implementing the proposal appeared in the fiscal year 2011 work plan. I'm looking right now for the exact amount. Um, you mean how many hours? Well, yeah, I, I know you proposed, you had a big picture kind of a thing, but it was, whatever you budgeted for this is not included in this packet. So what is it that you have budgeted for, for that? That information. Hundred and twenty hours over the course of fiscal year 2011, an amount of eleven thousand dollars. Okay, thank of you. Of staff time. Um, let me ask you a question about the effect on taxation. Um, the state of Illinois does the LE part as well. Will this have any effect on taxation issues? No, not not any that I'm aware of. This is a tool that is referenced during the discretionary review process by the Zoning Board of Appeals. Okay, so the, the state's LE portion, we're not using that, we want to come up with our own? Is that what you're saying? Not at all. Um, what we do is we, we refer to the, the Champaign County Soil and Water Conservation District, and that's where we get the LE score right, from the U.S. That. Department of Agriculture. Uh, the state has a LISA system. I'm, I'm not sure exactly how we reference that, but it, it'd be interesting to look at to see how they eliminated redundancy in their factors. That, that's my question is, are we creating a redundancy? With, if they're doing it, uh, why, why are we doing it? Uh, this is a tool used specifically, it's a site-specific type of tool. So the state looks at different issues. We look at site-specific county level issues. And what is the end result when you find that out? Are you trying to protect more farmland or protect best, best use for farmland? It's a rating, it's a tool used to rate the agricultural value of a parcel. Right. or a site. So what, with that, you're going to come up with some measure of which properties you will not allow development? It's an input uh, to help in a discretionary review process. So uh, it, it doesn't lead to any decision. It's one input. So I'm not sure if that answers your question. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what, what we're trying to get after here. What, what are we trying to achieve here with this? 
I mean, if, if it's, if it's, a, if it's a, a tool step. that needs to be fine-tuned and updated on a regular basis, and it's been 26 years since we've looked at this part of it. Okay. Now, why would we have a study session after this process? I mean, the whole point of us wanting to know more about what we're doing, that's why we scheduled a February 1st study session, and my interpretation is that we should do that now and get us to understand what the process is before we go through uh, 220 hours of your time because that was what we set up originally that we were going to pre-approve this kind of, of, of measure before you go down the road and then we find out we don't want to do this. That was the whole purpose. Why would we do it in October when the process is over? Well, the process that you're talking about is reviewing what you have before you as a proposal which that's outlines correct. exactly what we propose to do. No, th that's correct. That was the whole purpose when we put in the preamble to the land use project is that we would prior approve what you're going to do before we spent dollars. Okay. And that's why we scheduled a study session in February. It's, it's, it just seemed most logical to me that you'd want to have input from a special committee formed to make a recommendation on this following a procedure that you approved. But whatever, I mean, if you think it's better to have a study session about this proposal and this proposed project. Well, my last comment is that was what we attempted to do to try and, and curb the dollars spent and understand this. I think everybody, I've read it, I've, I've read marked everything here, but I have lots of questions and I sure would like to understand this before you go through the process. And I would rather have the study session February 1st or whenever we have got it scheduled to take this on. I think it's of that importance. Now, has anybody contacted the Farm Bureau about this, what their position in, is on this? Well, uh, Farm Bureau is aware of this proposal. We've had, uh, they've had a land use committee that, uh, where they invited Terry Savsko and I attended a couple years back and so they've been aware of this need for, for years also. Well, I tried calling them and they're, they're gone today. They're, they're snowbound in, in uh, in Atlanta, but I think John has had some contact. Yeah, where I, I'm a member of the Land Use Committee and the Farm Bureau, and um, we had discussed this, and they, there were no objections to having uh, that I can remember. Uh, were there any objections to it? Not that, I Not that I remember. We're both on the Land Use Committee of the Farm Bureau, uh, and so the Farm Bureau was not uh, uh, in opposition to this uh, proposal. John? Thank you. Uh, maybe it would help, <clears throat> Susan, if you would, if you would give us maybe a a um, example or two what an update would be. Um, what redundancy there is? What what kind of a example you could show? What's redundant? What could be changed? I don't have a specific example. Uh, I, I can point to item six on page thirty one where. Uh, general guidance and, and literature on this topic has indicated that between three and ten factors, SA factors, are recommended for LISA, and our existing LISA for Champaign County has 20 factors. So right there we can see that there's probably an opportunity to be more concise with our factor, factoring, and that's, that's the process that uh, is outlined beginning on page 33 of the packet where we assign a committee, we, we look at all of the f existing SA factors that are necessary for technical reasons and eliminate those that are not necessary for technical reasons. Then we, are, we consider the remaining factors for the SA factors that are adequate for proper LISA. Then we recommend o additional SA factors that we might want to include, like for instance, to accommodate new renewable energy kind of uh, phenomenon such as wind turbine. And then we consider if the existing factor weighting is adequate and adjust the factor weighting as may be necessary. So it's, it's a process that's been repeated by other counties and, and used over the years to update LISA systems, the SA portion. And, and we're not proposing anything radical here about how to update this. It's just a process that, that probably needs to happen. So if, if you had specific questions about this process, I, and if, if the board wants to have a study session before the process, 
is something you all need to discuss. Well, I just... Uh, okay, I, <laughs> I, I understand all that. I just thought maybe we could <clears throat> maybe help bring more clarity if we could have maybe an example or two. And I, you did bring up an example of, of a couple examples, and, that, and, and that's fine. But I, I have a question also, John, is... Is this motion also inclusive to this committee, to establishing this committee also? This is all one proposal. Okay. Okay. And uh, and how soon are we are we looking to establish this committee? Uh, the timeline proposed is to have the committee in place prior to March and have our first meeting uh, prior to spring break this March. It, maybe it's a it, ten month or so process that fine. we are, and ma at. maybe this is more chair viable. Where it, are are we going through the process of applications, or are you just going to pick? Uh, we would. I think we'd have to have applications, certainly for some of the slots. Uh, I, I would expect that. Yes. Okay. I and I I don't have a problem with updating. I think it's probably a few years, decades, probably do that. We do update. Um, Lisa standards, so I, I don't have a problem with this. So I just have some clarification questions. Uh, Jan, um, I would support. Uh, it seems like 30 years has been a long time. There's been a lot of changes in our county and the population. Our growth has gone. Um, maybe a lot of the factors are still good, but I I think it's a uh, we're evaluating a process. We're looking at. Uh, is the criteria that is being used now the criteria that we should use? Uh, the makeup of the committee would include, uh, looks like two county board members, so, and I assume they, these would be open meetings. If people have concerns, they could be at these meetings um, listening and, and probably even being able to voice uh, their feelings on, on some of the criteria. Uh, it, would, it just seems reasonable to me that when I read through this and looked at that original committee and they assume that every five years that this would be looked at and I'm not sure why we as a county have uh, left this uh, take 30 years for us to come to this point but I think it does look like we really need to do this. Uh, Patsy then Chris then Stan. Okay, several items. Um, let me see if I can help um, alleviate some of the concerns expressed by fellow um, county board members. Uh, the purpose of updating this is that uh, land uses change. And some of the categorization of the land that was done in 1984 or there, thereafter based on the original document, there have been conversations that maybe some of those categorizations need some adjusting. This updating will allow that to happen. It can't be updated with the present system. We've been working with this system all along and we do need to fine tune it like any document and it is very helpful in planning for us to know, have a better idea of, of the, uh, the site, and that's what this, this will do for us. So I have two suggestions to, to uh, see if we can't fold into the motion that is presently on the floor. One is that it appears to me that there is a high need for a more in-depth educational session for my fellow board members. Uh, to get a better understanding of just exactly what this will uh, do for the county. And that to happen before the committee gets established so that the board can give some direction or more comfortable direction as to what they would like to see done by that committee in relationship to the updating of this document. And then have a study session at the uh, culmination of the work of the committee. The second is, as I look over the proposed membership of this committee, these are very good suggestions, but I see one omission and one addition that I'd like to suggest. Uh, it does have one member from the original Lisa committee. 
I do. I, I know many of the people who were on that original committee, and uh, pending their, uh, their schedules, I would suggest there be two members from that LISA committee. And second, I see no expertise from the university being brought into this committee, and I would suggest that there be a line added to uh, the committee structure, that it be somebody from ACES to be brought in, somebody from NRES, maybe Ag Econ. <coughs> Any of those people have the expertise to add to the dynamics of this committee. Thank you. All right, we've got a lot of hands here. I'm going to try and get everybody in. Uh, next. Let's go with uh, Chris and then Stan, okay? And we'll keep going. I'll be very brief. Um, I would certainly think it would be beneficial for the board to get as much information about this as we can. I'd be happy to involve, be involved in any study session with regard to this, either before or after this process that we're proposing to do. But uh, I guess all I have to say is it seems pretty obvious. I mean, given that agribusiness is the economic mainstay of Champaign County, and that the county is in a position occasionally in these zoning matters to evaluate the value of a piece or the benefits or merit of a piece of farmland. The fact that we're doing it based on 30-year-old information seems inadvisable at best. So I would certainly like to see this update move forward. Uh, Stan? Well, hearing all the discussion, and I'd like to just move this on, so I'd like to make a motion that we do have a study session and we sort of look at what the state's requiring and where we would like for Susan and them to focus their area and, and move on with their committee after that. But we really need to, to go through some of that and, and see and give them the direction that this board has said we were going to do in the original plan. So I'm going to make a motion to have a study session before we move forward. Point of order. Second. Point of order. Point, no. Who's that? Point of order. The, the motion you have, uh, um, there's a problem. Like it's already motion on the floor. We have that motion on the floor, and your motion does not have any priority over that motion. So, well, you the only way if I suggest you could you could make that motion and defer the motion on the floor. The study session is set up in the motion here for October first. We're asking to move it. Then you should amend the motion. That's right. That's correct. My verbiage. Amend the motion. I'm going to amend my motion. There you go. You learn yet? Very good. Somebody going to second the amended motion? Move him up, Mr. Rosales. Okay, um, any discussion for a February, well, are we going to call it February 1st study session? Is that what we're going to go with it? No, it is. Is that you, Mr. Mr. James? I, I'm not sure the schedule. Is it February 1st? It's the February 1st study session. We already have three things on the February 1st. We already have three items on the February 1st study session. Uh, you want to bring your lunch and breakfast? Um, Who's the next one? The next one is is March 29th. You want to move it to March 29th so that we won't have a cluttering of <laughs> items. Would that be okay? If, yes. Uh, Susan has a is a, a schedule, and I'm That's not. That's what I'm, I'm looking at to, right now. I'm not trying to change her schedule. She wants a March 1st start. What's on the February 1st that can't be moved itself, and and take this as a priority. I mean, I, I'm not trying to get out of her, get away from her schedule. I'm just trying to learn what this is all about. The uh, February 1st study session already has three text amendments that we presented to the board in October that you requested study sessions for. Well, uh, one is for policies 415. Uh, the second one is policy 416. Uh, in reducing the amount of lots that you can do by right. The second one is changing the standards for the RRO. Uh, and the third one was the special use permit, adding a special use permit to the RRO. Susan's willing to, to give up that timeline. We'll do it March. It's March 29th. We, we could try to include all on February 1st and then stop if we just can't do it. I mean, this, this may be pretty okay. straightforward. No. All right, let's, let's go for that. Uh, we'll try and get everything in. If we can't, we'll just move it to March 29th, whatever's left over. It depends uh, on, on how the board is able to. All right, we have a motion on the floor. Hold on, hold on. We have a motion on the floor to move this item to a study session on February 1st. Motion to, um, I'm sorry, amend did motion by Stan. 
Uh, we had a second by Mr. Rosales. Discussion? I just wanted clarification. Are we adding a study session prior to, or are we moving the one that's afterwards to be prior to? Because it seems like we will still want to look at the recommendations of the committee after the committee's done their work. Just to be clear, I believe the motion to amend is to refer this issue to a February 1st study session. So there's a motion on the floor directing this proposal, and the motion to amend sends that to the February 1st study session. Um. <laughs> Carol. Just clarifying again well, that we, the vote tonight yeah. would not pass this proposal. It was right. it no, was all it is is moving it to this. February 1st study yeah. session. Is and so. If, the so motion, if this motion is approved. I'd like to clarify uh, procedure-wise. This proposal included a study session with its passing. What we're actually, in essence, doing is changing the entire process today and not approving this. If we voted on it as it is, it would have a study session included. If we changed to the current motion that's on the floor, then in essence we won't be approving anything at all not the previous study session or we've been discussing this at the study session on february 1st. first period that's all a point point of procedure is that not is that not a motion to defer i think it is it is yeah. i think that's a procedural change i mean my 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 interpretation of the of the <laughs> amendment was to allow the original motion to proceed but in addition to add a study session for february 1st so if that wasn't the mover's intention then we should state that now and and i would just add to that that february 1st you can't defer this motion to february 1st because you can't take action at a study session and this is a motion for action so you should actually defer this to the meeting on february 8th with the direction that it be included for a study session discussion on february 1st <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> you want to clarify that? <laughs> okay. Um, so we have to amend, again amend? No. Mr. James' motion is a motion to defer this to February 8th with the direction that this topic be placed on the February 1st study session for discussion. We already have the second by Mr. Rosales. Okay. Uh, do we have a discussion on that? Please no. Thank you. Ms. Petrie. Sorry, but that's not the way I understood his motion at all. I understood his motion. He changed, yeah. he changed, he changed it. Changed I think his, his first motion oh, was very it. unclear. He we allowed him to change the motion. That's, that's all in favor, say aye. 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 All opposed, motion carries. Aye. Thank you. <laughs> Next. Okay. But, uh, can I ask a question of clarification? Yes. May I urge Susan to have a conversation with the appropriate people to lessen that agenda for that study session in February? It's impossible to cover with quality all those topics. Well, we said we were going to get what we can get done and then the rest goes to the 29th. Yeah. yeah. Oh, right. Okay, uh, C. Here we go again. Well, this one's easier, I think. Right. This is, <laughs> I hope. Well. Dire direction, okay. Uh, direction to CCRPC, plan regarding proposed Champaign County Building Code Feasibility Study, consistent with the County Board's resolution, 7482, and the approved Energy Efficient and Conservation Block Grant. I move approval. Mr. Langenheim, Mr. Richards, first and second. All discussion. Oh, I hope not. Oh, no. Okay, I thought we'd. John. <laughs> all right. All right. I, I have point. I have a question for clarification. Uh, we've already got the grant, the eighty-three <coughs> twenty-five, eight thousand three hundred twenty-five dollar grant. Okay. Correct. Exactly. What is the study going? To give us. <clears throat> okay, uh, if you look at page 73 of your packet, you will see a section called End Product. The outcome of this will be a report to 
the Committee of the Whole entitled Champaign <coughs> County Building Code with Energy Efficient Building Design Standards Implementation Strategy and Feasibility Study. The key words are feasibility study. And this report will contain recommendations for the county board to consider with regard to the county's implementation and enforcement of a building plan with, excuse me, a building code with energy efficient building des design standards. So it's a first step, it's a feasibility study. It gives you some numbers and, and places to begin your consideration of this. It's, it's where you would begin. John. I, okay. <clears throat> I understand that. But for clarification, <clears throat> because I'm looking at the uh, our LRMP um, language and goals and policies that we have we have voted on and approved. The energy efficient code that the state has drawn up or has enacted. We have said in our policy that we will enforce it on a commercial building, correct? Is that what the energy part of this particular study is about? No, this this would pertain to a building code. Uh, it, it would it, it would include performance standards that are considered state of the art for energy efficiency. So that includes single family homes, multi -fam multiple family homes, mm -hmm. apartments, dupl duplexes, uh, condos. Um, is the standard for the uh, modular home? Does it apply also? Will this apply? Ha have any effect? Well, there's. Or is that a, that's a different standard? Yeah. I know, but is that is that going to have? implications with our policy that we're going to or our ordinance we have life safety codes that we need to already enforce uh, this this study will fo focus on a building code whatever it is that a building code would cover in the county and probably since we do allow mobile homes in the county that would be covered I, I know I'm talking about we're talking two different things here building codes I understand Susan I want to know about the efficiency standards of what I'm asking about <laughs> and that's why I'm asking you about modular homes is there is this going to tell us about the efficiency standards of modular homes if we're going to regulate those also if there are any um, this would probably include some component that addresses that concern it's it's simply information gathering for for you to consider it's it's probably it, it's going to include a recommendation for you to, to look at so i'll wrap this whole thing up mm -hmm. we're not only going to be have a feasibility study that includes building codes an adoption of building codes for everything in the county but also energy energy efficient standards that the state has deemed worthy is that correct i i would have to look at the current codes and current uh, best management practices and best processes that are recommended. I would, I would have to do research to even answer your question. I, I don't know what the energy efficient building design standards are yet. So I can't Does the even state even know? Does, 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 the state have, does the state have standards for their code? I haven't had the opportunity to do research on this. This is an information gathering uh, exercise so this is typical of this bankrupt state we have we have a code but we have no standards I, I assume there's some standards out there somewhere especially <laughs> since there was grant money allocated to uh, explore ways to incorporate those standards Be because I'm once again I'm referring not to the building codes themselves those are self-explanatory I mean there's been building codes out there for generations but I'm referring to the energy standards in building codes that's that's the one I'm, I'm asking about so we have we have standards out there but we really don't we have codes out there but we really don't have standards it's a it's a certain type of building code uh, this grant money was provided to us to explore 
building code with energy efficiency de building design standards. So that's what this report would do. It would explore that. It would collect information about those kind of standards, whatever they are. Yeah. Thank you. Al. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, what are we, uh, just I'm going to take a swing at this like John did. Uh, John, what, we are obligated to enforce uh, beginning this year BOCA. Uh, what, is it, what is it that we're obligated with this at the state level for all com new commercial? Beginning on July 1. Yes. Um, before we allow occupancy of uh, anything other than a um, one or two family home, I believe, right. um, we have to have a certification that that construction meets the international building code. Boca code. Yeah. That's, that's what I thought. Okay. That's a state statute now. That's, going to that's, that's the state statute. State and statute all July 1st. It's going to come all new county right. buildings will have to take that. So right. what mm -hmm. Susan is proposing here is this is over and above this pro this uh, proposal on energy efficient buildings is over above what the BOCA is going to ask for or require us to mandate for commercial buildings. Uh, I, when, we're only authorized to adopt a, a uh, very broadly based code. I have to say I don't know how the energy standards in the International Building Code compare to that state energy efficiency act i've never had cause to investigate that so this will this will give us the opportunity to compare and see what what the difference is but again uh I, here we go again in terms of what we're going to require of developers and builders that i don't even know what the city of champaign and urbana require from energy efficiency and that's probably what you're going to do susan is is take some comps of what they're they're requiring but it's just going to put another level of cost to a building this if we do enforce yeah, it if we do enforce I, hey, I understand I'm not, not, I'm not stupid action. but I'm saying if we're taking a study what's the next step come on let's well, let's be honest about to, that is to look at the study right well, well let's be we honest about what we're trying to do here the money for it, and I just would say that you know let's be cautious about what we're trying to do I don't want to layer something else for builders and developers beyond what we're being required to do uh, by Boca code that we're going to be mandated by the state. This is a big jump for county. And, and uh, most people would object to what we're trying to do here, but let's be open-minded about it. But, you know, let's not go crazy about what we want to uh, you know, add on to what the state's going to already require us to do. Thank you. Chris. Um, as I understand this, we're being asked to spend $2,775 of our money to go with this $8,000 of, sta of the state's money uh, to get a report that says essentially what might be involved in adding energy efficiency standards to a some future county building code is that a fair statement well it will it contain those recommendations uh, and it, it it may include a recommendation not to include energy efficiency design standards based on cost benefits studies that are relevant okay that that being said i think it's probably we'll probably get twenty seven hundred seventy five dollars worth of information out of this study but i I do want to state that I share Mr. Nudo's concern. It, it seems to me that the state has taken action in terms of uh, dealing with this very real problem of air, large areas of the state that essentially have no building code. Uh, but I think that given that the state has done that, that seems to take a lot of the sales out of Champaign County's motivation, or wind out of the sales of Champaign County's motivation to want to do that. So I'm also kind of skeptical as to whether the county should be, should be getting into that business, but I'll support this study. Definitely. And uh, I'll probably be redundant in, in what was just said, but um, again, we're asked to make a decision on a study, and then once we have this information, vis-a-vis uh, uh, -vis a study for informational purposes, it's what we do with that information should we decide to implement it. And, and again, I, you know, Alan said, and I'm being redundant, um, it's another layer and it's another way to potentially tack on to the builder developer costs and we don't even know we don't first of all we, do, we don't have BOCA standards presented to us so again we don't have information uh, necessary to uh, help give us some guidance on exactly what it is this study is going to do I mean it's sort of like a blind study at this point is that is that correct I think on page 
73 of your packet, the work plan tasks, there are five there listed, which will go into detail about what this study will include. Mm -hmm. So it's not a blind study. It has um, tasks that are specific, outcomes, end products, and it's simply a, a collection of information for your benefit so that you have a basis upon which to say whatever you're going to say about this issue. Well, I guess that's just it. It's whatever we're going to say about this. So is I, you know, um, I think the, you know, the, uh, that uh, there's just, if, until we get BOCA information, until we know exactly what it is that we're doing uh, to, to glean information, again, it's just, it, to me, it looks like an additional layer of something that's already being implemented by the state upon Champaign County. Thank uh, all right, we, we're, we're, we're kicking the heck out of this <laughs> same thing. Stan? Just, uh, a study's a study. I've got a lot of studies sitting on my bookshelf in my office. They're gathering dust, and 10 years from now, somebody's gonna say, geez, I got a bright idea, and I'm gonna hand them that study, and we're gonna move forward. It's just information. This board can all turn it, it down, do whatever it wants. Mm. Jan? Well, it, it would seem that we're sitting here saying we don't know what's in VOCA, we don't know what's in this. Uh, it sounds like we need some information. Um, <laughs> we need a study. study, study. In, in <laughs> reading study. the newspaper recently, um, and I don't know a lot about this, but it sounds like the university is looking at all their buildings and they are going, they've already done some. They have planned to look at others to make them more energy efficient. They gave some um, dollar amounts of how much they're saving per year in their energy costs in the buildings that they've already done some work. And I remember one of them was like $42,000 in reduction of an energy cost. That's correct. I, I can't tell you which building that was, and I assume this is a fairly sizable building. But it would seem that it would be good to know what some of these possibilities are. Maybe uh, we will reject them, but maybe we will feel strongly about suggesting that some of these be added to a code. Uh, it seems like a fairly small amount of money uh, to do this, and I would think that uh, it would be good to find out a little bit more about it, and we may not. Add it beat to this code. to death. I'm going to go one more. Mr. J. Thank you. I'll be really quick. Uh, my real c concern is uh, $2,700, by the way, is not just a little bit of money. But uh, having said that, uh, we're talking about BOCA codes. We got international codes, which a lot of mun mis municipalities are moving to. We've got NFPA codes. We got state fire marshal codes. So I'm not sure what code you're talking about, to be real honest. So. Well, you've, you've heard the question of oh, does, should the county adopt a building code? That's this, why they shouldn't. Right, and this would be information for you to base your decisions on. Right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This, this is just the study. All right, let's have a vote on this now, please. Okay, all in favor. What's that? Roll call. Ro roll call. Okay, all in favor, yes for the study. No. No, we asked What's that? I, I am. I'm just reiterating what the vote is. It's yes for the study. Okay, Kat. Alex. Yes. Ammons. Yes. Anderson. Yes. Berkson. Yes. Betts. Yes. Holderfield. No. James. James. Uh. I just had my attention. But the study said, do you want to study, yes or no? Oh, definitely. Definitely. Jay. No. <coughs> Kurtz. Yes. Langenheim. Yes. McGinty. Yes. Nudo. Yes. O'Connor. Not today. <laughs> Petrie. What was it? Yes. <laughs> Quisenberry. Yes. Richards. Yes. Rosales. Yes. Schrader. Yes. Weibel. Yes. 16 to 3. Uh, motion carries. Uh, okay. Um, I have, there's no monthly report. Uh, other business, no, it's not ELOC. What's that? Oh, the desk, I'm sorry. Oh, I didn't, oh, here's the monthly report. Sorry, I didn't see it. Okay. Um, 
John, monthly report. <laughs> yeah, you do, you do have a monthly report. Uh, this December is actually turning out to be similar to other Decembers. Um, we are without one position in our department now. We no longer have an associate planner. Uh, we hope to be recruiting for a new planner at the end of the three months in accordance with county policy. Um, I think we can make it through that three months just fine. Um, but we do want to get someone on board that can help with more than just planning. Uh, we want to get someone on board that can help us with enforcement. Um, so at the end of this three month period, we'll be recruiting. And um, that's all I have to say about the monthly report. Move to accept and place on file. Okay, uh, other business. All in favor? All in favor? I'm sorry. All in favor. All in favor. Oh, I'm sorry. All in favor of bringing in accepting the report. Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Okay. Uh, just, I have just one quick before we can uh, head out of here, hopefully. Tomorrow night, just for your uh, information, the redistrict commission will have its first public session and meeting right here at 7 p.m. tomorrow evening. So anybody want to attend, you are welcome. That's open to the public and we'll have public input first. Uh, I move approval of the closed session minutes. Second. What's that? I move oh, the session. Adjourn. No, no. Okay. closed session vote, minutes. Vote, vote, vote. Closed session. Closed oh, session. I'm sorry. Uh, I moved uh, approval. Approval of the closed session Second. minutes. I, I, I'm sorry. Uh, I, I'm sorry. A point, point of, or call for the orders of the day. Uh, do we determine what's going to be on the consent agenda for ELUC? There isn't anything. Nothing. There is nothing. nothing. There are nothing no action items. Because it had, wasn't 100%. Nobody, there was no vote. There was, there was no vote. Okay, okay, vote. thank you. I, I, it was not stated. I'll thank you. In favor. Okay. It was not stated. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> no, that was oh, perfectly legit. Yeah, the there's nothing going, going to the county board anyway on Thursday. Approval of the minutes. All those in favor. All, 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 all those in favor, approval of the closed session minutes. Aye. Aye. Move adjournment. Second. First. Gone. We're adjourned.